kind of a brisket tutorial showing you the how to pick out the meat, how to trim seasonings and, and uh, injections and all that good stuff. Uh, so today we thought we'd put a video together uh, so you guys can see what we're actually talking about. So let's show them what we got here. What are we working with, Jan? Boom, we are working with a 16 pound um, brisket. This is a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not the, the, the creme de la creme or the, the fancy Wagyu briskets, but uh, in my opinion, like these are the ones you buy at stores, these are the ones you cook at home. So yeah, super excited about this. So when you're, when you're like we, we discussed, when you're picking out briskets, um, flip it over to the back. And John, you can kind of get in here and see. Most all are gonna be labeled with the USDA um, stamp, whether it's choice, prime, or select. Uh, I picked this one out specifically, you can't really see here, but this is a certified Angus beef as well. Those are just a little bit better, um, or kind of the upper two thirds choice. Hopefully, um, when we cook it, you know, it'll turn out pretty good. So this got, it's got a lot of fat on it. And then Jan's gonna go to town and uh, trim some of that stuff off, kind of how we trim it. Without a doubt. I, and one thing to look at when we may mention this on the last podcast that we just put out, um, or the one that we'll drop here shortly, is that um, trying to find a brisket that's evenly, um, I guess, thickness throughout, right? So if you'll come in here, you'll look by, by putting your hands uh, at, at the end of this flat, I can see that this side and this side are pretty much the same, right? They, they feel the same. So when you're going to cut off, you're going to get even slices uh, throughout. So that's one thing when I'm in the store, I, I look at that right there. I'm not trying to fold a brisket in half or anything yeah. else. Put but I'm, fold, Jan. See, yeah, right, 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 right. See, fold it up. Oh, I'm mean, asking a good brisket. Uh, <laughs> but no, but seriously, if you look at that, the thickness of your brisket uh, from, from here all the way back, uh, and then trying to get um, a symmetry on both sides. So that's what I look for. Let's do it up. Let's do it. This is the hard part right here, right? Trying to drop all that blood everywhere? Yeah. Boom, that's it. This one's kind of deceiving a little bit. This part right here that we're looking at, was actually folded over in that package. And that, that's how it felt. So unrolling this, it's a pretty thin, I would probably just yeah. whack that off anyways, right? So, uh, but it's meat we, and we all, we're, we're gonna eat this, so. We're not worried about competition style. Yeah, and FYI, uh, those are the same knives that we had sharpened with knife, knife aid, guys. So uh, let us know how they feel, Jan. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So uh, look at this. I kind of uh, work from the point uh, down to the flat. Uh, I think it's just, it, it, for me, it, it, the bigger pieces that I get off first, I feel like I'm accomplishing more and mm -hmm. the way my brain works or whatever. So that's kind of how I, I, I work uh, a, a brisket. And I usually start um, at this at this piece that you see right here, uh, which did we figure out this is a left-handed or right-handed? Uh, we, we don't know. Okay. Well, we got we still have to figure out that again. I know we've kind of talked about that, but uh, I think James can drop a uh, some knowledge on us on the podcast, and he'll probably be able to. So we, we always kind of start with the top. I guess we consider this the top of the brisket. Yeah. And then you got the bottom of the brisket, and uh, kind of a, a tip for you guys. When you go to trim it up, it really works better if it's cold, really cold. I mean, you can almost have that kind of pars partially a little frozen, whatever, because once this meat starts warming up, that fat, super hard to trim. Everything just gets like gelatinous and it's just hard to cut. So I, I like to get in, um, like I was talking about earlier, you, know, you really got to use your hands to pull back on this fat. Like I can pull this and you can see how, how this kind of just runs through here. That's it's how I, I, I usually trim. So I'll, I'll put a lot of pressure on, I'll pull, and then I run the knife through. Each time I do, it just pulls off just a little bit. Man, nice butter, dude. It's great. Hey, 
really and truthfully, if you see anything is super, super hard and you can see how hard this is, um, you're, it's not gonna render, right? So you're gonna get a piece of, a piece of meat uh, or a piece of fat in here that's basically just gonna be this, this, uh, this something that never cooks down. It's gonna create a lot of oil as well in, in your pan or in your, in your tin foil or however you're cooking there. So for me, this, this, is, this is not a flavor piece uh, that, that you really want to keep a lot of. Yeah, it's not um, going to render down. No. It's going to be a big old blob of fat. So by putting my hand in here, I'm able to feel how far this thing kind of goes down and the angle that it's, it sits on, right? So run back again. And it's okay to, to keep doing this over and over again. The, the worst part is, is taking off too much, right? And you're like, man, I wasted some good meat by... By, by going super fast. Um, so, it looks something like that right there. We're getting right down into the meat. These hard fats coming off. Boom. Now this pocket right here, you can see, I'm not probably gonna go any further in there. I'm probably gonna leave that right there. If I, if I go too much more, I'm gonna start taking good meat out, um, which I think that's just a um, and it probably helps uh, just kind of protect your the, the inside of your meat there as far as drying out. So, so you got like right here. That's what they kind of talk about that silver skin that you guys want to remove, get rid of. I mean, it's just it's not good eating. Plus, it's hard for your seasoning to get in there and stick to the meat and stay on the meat if all that's sitting on top. This knife aid, I'm a huge fan of right now. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I mean, how, how much are these knives, James? The knives themselves? Yeah. I mean, they were in the junk drawer. I mean. Yeah. They're they're not. These aren't like. Yeah, probably know. Walmart specials, maybe. I, I, yeah. Right. Well, it's cutting like one of the best knives I've I've used. <laughs> so, uh, great job on that. You see, I'm kind of just kind of lifting up on the brisket. And just kind of shaving it, right? Really don't want to go too far down into the meat itself. The whole time it's kind of picking up on it. And for cooking home, I mean, you. You don't necessarily have to go in and see this little silver skin right there. You don't necessarily have to go and pull all that out. You're doing competitions, yes, you probably want to do that. But at home, it'll be fine. You won't even notice it after it's already cooked. No, a little bit's fine. That's, I'm, I'm okay with yeah. that. But this, when you start pulling up on it... Yeah, it, some of this white. Yeah, that's, that's got to go. go. My worries, I always try to get in there and get some of that stuff, but I end up just taking more good meat off of it. Right. Well, that's where uh, practice comes into play, right? I mean, nobody trims the perfect brisket the first time. No. The more you do them, the better you get at it. And you'll notice like most all briskets will have kind of like a grayish type things on the edge. It's just, it, it's just normal. It's like the, the dry age or the wet age action that's going on inside the bag. It's perfectly fine. We usually just do a light little skim cut, cutting it off. Um, if you don't do it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it'll still be good um, to eat. What do you think so far? You know, it's tricks to trade, right? Pulling off the membrane for a, uh, a rib, you know, using a napkin or something. I don't, I don't know if there's really any good tricks to just kind of working with this. Uh, to be honest with you, I think it's just, you know, it's all about how far or how much you want to remove uh, yeah. on this. There's not really a, a good little 
Plus, I mean, it probably helps to have like maybe a, um, a really, really sharp uh, fillet knife, like a boning knife to yep. really get in there and you can get under that skin. Again, this is the backyard. We're not really good to, not really gonna to try to get into that much because we want to really kind of preserve all the meat that we can. So something here, if you look, uh, which I'll turn this around, is I always run the knife right down the side. Uh, this is kind of a, to me, it's like more oxidized, I guess, or it, the meat doesn't feel the same as it does up here. It's, it's been exposed to air longer or, or something. Uh, so typically I will take and I'll, I'll shave about a, I don't know, quarter of an inch or so off of that. Uh, and it kind of exposes just the the, uh, the good meat there. And this, to me, is just a super hard looking, um, yeah, I'm not eating that. I, I typically don't want to eat that. Um, and maybe it's a personal thing for me, but I'm looking at it, I'm like, that's, to me, it just yeah. looks a lot more cleaner. Um, right here too. Yeah. Well. Yeah. No. This also kind of gives you an idea of what we discussed a little bit. I mean, so the brisket comprises, uh, com so the brisket comprises, I'm mm -hmm. use my words yep. here, um, of two different muscles. So we have one muscle that's running here, and then there's another muscle underneath it that's separated by this little fat vein right here. So you'll see a lot of uh, cooks, uh, competition, and otherwise that are a little more experienced, they'll go in there and they'll separate the two muscles um, so they can make the the burnt ends out of the point part of it, and then you'll get your slices over here on the uh, the flat portion of it. That's right. I think uh, if I'm remembering correctly, so you got the you got the superficial pectoral muscle, and then you got the the deep pectoral muscle. That's right. And, That's uh, right. I think the the deep one is the uh, point, and the flat is the superficial. Okay. Yeah, I I could be wrong. I go back and look and see, but and you'll have a lot of times these two. You can see the marbleization that's running through the fatty portion of it, which is this is the part of the brisket that everybody loves. These two pieces of meat cook differently. So when you're doing competition or when you're doing it at home and you're probing in the, in the butt end, uh, and it it's coming out a little bit different than what the flat is, because I think typically the butt will cook quicker. And I think it's due to the, all that fat in there that's heating up and it's able to, you know, cook the meat a little it's bit. It's not as dense either, right? Correct. So, uh, and then you hear this, this backside right here, I don't really worry about this backside so much right here. I mean, it's, this is pretty lean. I don't see a lot of fat on it anyways. Uh, I mean, if there's really a lot of hard fat, I'll remove it. Uh, but right now, I think this is just a good protection, a good barrier, uh, depending on how you're cooking your, your brisket to leave some of that there. Point side is what actually connects you, uh, connects to the rib cage. Yep. Is that right? Yep. That's right. That's right. Like this, this right here. So you're looking at this. This is a this is a pretty fatty side of the brisket right here, right? So this is it's got probably got some meat in here, uh, but uh, I don't know how how much. We can we'll start cutting into it and we'll see. You're starting to see like a little bit of a red there. Um, typically. Yeah. And keep in mind that uh, uh, some of this, I mean, you want to uh, shake these briskets up as kind of aerodynamic as possible because every little jagged edge or piece that's super high is going to hit the smoke first. And that's what's typically going to burn up before the rest of the brisket is done. So you'll see the, the I guess you want to say the beautiful briskets that like Aaron Franklin's does or whatever, where they sit there and uh, they ha they'll have this thing all flat just you know basically i think they trim off some of that the the point just yep. to make it so aerodynamic when i'm going in here i'm just kind of remove some of this fat this this is this thing is so there's so much fat in this back side right here right uh i, I like to keep probably a little bit um probably a little bit quarter of an inch or less i'm, I'm okay with too much fat i think it ruins your au jus uh, comes out just very, very oily, um, and, and and frankly, I don't think you need um, 
a whole lot of it, but it, it, depending on, I guess, the cut of the meat, right? So if you've got a, a really, really good cut of meat, um, you probably use less, less fat on it. Uh, a, a lower quality of meat, probably gonna leave a little bit more on there, just kind of help protect it, help help keep it uh, moist, yeah. so. And if you're not uh, if you're not wrapping it and you're just going straight, just smoke, I mean, it probably is a better idea to leave a little bit more of that fat on there. Just kind of help protect it and keep it moist while it's cooking. That's right. Because we're gonna do the, uh, the, the Texas Crunch. Uh, so we're gonna wrap this thing in, well, I don't know, we got, we got butcher paper, so maybe we'll, we'll wrap it in butcher paper. Uh, but typically we do ten full, and like I said, we collect all that au jus that's, uh, that the brisket uh, puts off, and it mixes with the seasonings and all that good stuff. And it just basically like a flavor bomb, just explosion. Uh, you can sit there and dip your uh, brisket slices back into it. I mean, that's that's a lot of fat there. Like that's never going to really render down. I mean, there's flavor in fat, and I get that, but. I mean, the meat's got to speak for itself yeah, you too. Gotta build you got to that seasoning on the meat. And one thing I read is like, um, so you can put, you can marinate your brisket, you can um, uh, season it, rub it down, inject it. Uh, injection really helps get flavor deep into the meat. Um, but when you're rubbing the outside, really the only seasoning uh, that's going to seep into the meat is salt. I think that's the only seasoning out of like all the stuff that you put on that's actually small enough to uh, get sucked down into the, the muscle fibers. So you make sure, I mean, when we do briskets and we season them up, you'll see, I mean, we put a pretty good coating of, uh, of, of salt or rubs that have salt in it because you just need it. And you'll notice as you're, as you're cutting, as you're, uh, I don't know if Jan can tell, but I guess the the fat, the oil, just kind of like dulls up the blade a little bit. It does as you go, so it gets a little bit harder and harder to do it. So you got another knife there, Jane, if you want to. Okay. Take a stab at that one. I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man, I like butter. Jeez, look at that. I'm just like, I'm just. So the cooker that you're using, does that play any bearing on how much fat you're taking off the bottom? It, it yeah, it does. I mean, it really, I guess uh, I read somewhere that you want to keep uh, fat in between the meat and the heat. So it really, it depends on what your cooker is. So if you're doing an offset smoker, um, you definitely want to, us personally, keep that fatty end uh, towards the fire. Um, if you're doing a pellet smoker where you got, or another smoke smoker that has the heat coming from below, you definitely want to keep that fat um, below. Um, I don't know. I mean, you hear a lot of talk about the, Fat side up, fat side down. I don't, we've done it both ways and I quite honestly, I can't really tell the difference. I mean, about you, Jan, I mean, well, the only way I, I put think, fat side, I mean, up, I've never, you know. I think it's it's probably a personal preference. You, you learn a certain way, you do it. I've done them both ways. Um, I don't really see a benefit uh, in either one. I think w whatever you go with, you stick with, right? That's the big thing, don't, don't start flipping your stuff around and and yeah, what we say earlier on the podcast, these are flapjacks, right? We're yeah. not trying to so let it, put it on the smoker, let it sit, let the heat do the thing, let the smoke do the thing. Um, yeah, just keep in mind every time you move that, rotate it, flip it, spin it, do whatever, uh, you're knocking off seasoning, you're knocking off rubs, uh, so that kind of defeats the purpose of uh, developing that nice bark if you're just going to sit there and turn it all the time. That's right. I'm still trying to keep some of this fat on here. Like, like this right here, I'm seeing, this is just a lot of fat right there. I don't know, like, you're not gonna get, the flavor's gonna still be on this on this piece, but by removing this, I'm just I'm making it more, more appealing for anybody else that wants to eat uh, this brisket, so. And plus, it's very hard for that seasoning to stick to that fat. Once that fat starts rendering and starts melting, 
uh, inside the, the smoker. Yep. Some of that seasoning is going to go with it. You always hear that, dude. What, what do you guys think? Do you think you hear those people like, well, we cook the fat side up because the, the fat um, drains through the meat right. and yeah. keeps it moist and, and based. You guys buy into that or no? I used to do them like that because I heard that, but I don't. I don't think that the uh, the oils and the fat will mix with the the waters and whatnot in the meat. I think it just it stays separate. I don't think yeah. you're gonna add. The only way you're adding something into that is by injecting. But to each their own. Yeah. A lot they're, of big names that do it that way. Definitely. Everybody's got their own way to do it, and we're not we're not really saying this is the the way to do it. This is the best way to do it. It's just it's how we do it. This stuff right here is never going to render. It's super super hard fat. See, like if you, if you can checkerboard it like that, if it's flaky. Probably needs to be removed. There's a little bit more of this, and I'm fold this piece back over, and it'll be good. If you keep going that way, that's how you separate the point and flat. <laughs> right. No, no, no. <laughs> we're, not, we're not separating. Yeah, but see, when you do it like that, now it sits nice and flat. That's how you get that aerodynamic. That's right. Whatnot. Going right over the top. Hmm. Yeah. Right now, I'm just kind of like looking at this brisket, like <clears throat> trying to get any, any points that are sitting higher, just knocking those off. Um, yeah. I mean, 16 pound brisket, this thing's probably down to at least probably, I would say, it's probably a good three pounds taken off right here. So. Any of that fat that you take off usable in like sausage or anything like that? Some yeah. of it is, yeah. Sure. The I think they the harder stuff is yeah. is what they they well, I, I don't wanna lie to you guys, I could probably give you some wrong information. You definitely can't can't use the the slimy stuff. Yeah, on it. no, you but don't I think to. the the harder bits yeah. uh are perfect for Right. Sausage. It's gonna have the flavor, but it's not gonna just turn into juicy mush. Correct. Mm -hmm. What do you think, guys? This is pretty good, I think. Looks good. Looks good to me. Yep. Boom. So this is a uh, our basic trim video. So guys, uh, uh, stay tuned, uh, and we're gonna get to seasoning this guy. Mm -hmm.